Are you worried and stressed out a lot? Today we're talking about how to stop reacting and how you can choose to respond to the circumstances that life brings to you in this episode of Coffee with Tea. friends to another episode of Coffee with Tea. I'm your host Tanya Tyler and I'm excited because I have Ms. Rita Ricks who will help us figure out, she's already figured out her purpose and she wants to help you figure out yours. She's a spiritual business coach and she's fabulously gorgeous and I won't tell her age but she looks tell fabulous. Tell <laughs> I will not tell that age but you look <laughs> fabulous girl so without further ado. Ms. Rita Ricks, welcome to the show, ma'am. Thank you, my love. It's good seeing you. I'm glad to be on. We're going to talk about um, I Am The Boss and Mm -hmm. really talking about the mind, body, and spirit and stuff like that and how it works together. Can you tell us a little bit more about um, how you're dealing with this COVID-19 and how has it really been affecting your business as you've been going forward? So what I want to say about being the boss is that you do not allow current, current circumstances to disrupt who you are. Because we all know that whatever is happening now, at some point it's going to leave and then something else is gonna come and take its place. So, so being the boss of your business is also about being the boss of your life. You are the CEO of your life. And so if you are in fact, taking care of your mind, body, and spirit, you will not be impacted. So again, you don't wait until something like this happens and you go, oh, I need to go to the gym or, oh, I need to eat better. This is about being daily focused and intentional about what is best for you. So there isn't stress in my life because stress makes you old looking and I'm not going to have that. And it really isn't about worry because if in fact, you are connected to your creator, Mm -hmm. then you know that your creator already saw this coming and that you are in fact covered. And here's the other thing. If you're worrying, you, the worry doesn't make anything go away. It doesn't make anything better. It just makes you um, more at ease, you know, more at dis-ease because dis-ease causes disease. Right, and right. so I, I say I'm the boss because we are each the CEO of our lives. We create our own realities. So I always have choices. So for me, when I heard that uh, when our governor said we had to go home, I immediately left my office, went home, a little bit taken aback admittedly because he was saying, particularly for those people 70 and over, and that's me, and I, I kind of felt that, I kind of felt something like that for a minute, you know? Mm-hmm. And then the next day, I set up my office downstairs in the dining room, and that's where I was for three months. And I kept moving. I never stopped because, again, if you focus on the current situation, you can't see the big picture. And what the big picture told me was stay inside, you know, wear a mask if I go outside, keep my hands washed. I mean, very simple instructions. And my days continued and I brought in more clients. Wow. Wow. Yeah. So you were already sort of like, if you were already prepared, you know, you had that faith in it that, you know, you just follow your, your course and you're already prepared to make that pivotal shift, right? Exactly, exactly. And what it did, because I am a very much a proponent of being silent. We cannot hear from our creator if we're always talking. And we are human beings. We are not human doings. So at some point, we have to be quiet. So my practice of being silent has been going on for 10 years. And I, I spend uh, most days 30 minutes in silence. Sometimes uh, it's only 20. Sometimes it's 15, depending on what, how, how much time I have. But by being at home, I could take two hours on a Saturday and just sit. And that kept me calm. That kept me connected. It also allowed me to hear next steps. Because I tell anybody that God and I are creator, co-creators of my life. He tells me what to do and then I do it. Right, right. So I don't have to spend any time worrying because he's already got it. Right. 
I, I, I can relate to that because like mm -hmm. I said, I, I think it was, you can be led to your, your um, calling, I guess yes. you could say. So where, where did you, I mean, you talk about you're a spiritual business coach. So I'm, I know you're led to the spirit, but when, when did you know that this was really the path that you needed to be on? Uh, so I, uh, just a little bit of background, uh, I owned another company, Mirror Enterprise, and uh, I turned it over to my daughter in 2005 because I had had several losses. Well, first of all, I had just gotten over breast cancer. I lost both parents within the span of four years, uh, a long-term relationship, and my business partner passed. So there was a lot going on in my head and I decided I did not want to be the boss of Mirror Enterprise anymore. And, and, and you have to give yourself permission to do that. You don't stay somewhere where it's not working, you know? So I left and I came home and I was very familiar to people in the business community. So I figured it would be an easy uh, switch for me to move. I was already a trainer. So I'm simply going to move to coaching where I do more one-on-one. -on -one. What I did not expect was the great, um, you know, the recession. So we're talking 2008, 2009, and I really began. Now, here's the interesting thing. Even as I say I began to struggle, I never lost my house. I never lost my car. So, but I did feel there was something I needed. I ended up over at a retreat center in Richmond called Richmond Hill. It is amazing. I took a two-year course over there entitled RUA. Rua, which is breath, the school of, of spiritual direction. Okay. And I took two years to find out who I am. Who am I without my parents? Who am I a uh, breast cancer survivor? Who am I no longer with the guy I'd been with for a long time? All of that, you know? And I, I realized who I am. My spirit connected finally with God because there is a difference, in my opinion, to religion and relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I had the religion. What I developed in those two years was relationship. And they required that we spend uh, in those two years, uh, six times we had to do 24 hour silences. Ooh. And they worked for me because I was talking all the time. And it worked for me to be still. And on the last silence, and two months before the class was over in the second year, uh, I realized I just began to cry one evening and I just we were over at the site and I couldn't stop crying I was listening to some music and I realized later that it was because I had surrendered I had let go mm. so people talk about it all the time oh let go and let God let go and let God but they don't they don't <laughs> yeah they don't let go and they don't let God and sure. for me it was just this weight was lifted off of me and that so I went in two years before as a life coach I came out two years later as a spiritual coach. Wow, wow, yeah. that's amazing. I, I studied a little bit um, about spirituality and I thought about going into coaching and stuff like that. So mm -hmm. where do you find um, it's hardest to really like get the people to really open up and start thinking is like, uh, you know, like you said, a lot of people like to do, but they don't like to just be quiet. They, mm -hmm. they give you a lot of lip service, but they don't follow up mm -hmm. with it. So how do right. you, where do you find the people who are like looking for that change? Do you wait for them to, um, you know, so hit the crisis or I don't no, know. No, 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 no. Most people, my clients are attracted to me just like I'm attracted to them. So okay. I am involved. I do have a social media uh, uh, woman that I work with, but I have just, and I've used social media quite a bit, but I just believe that what I send out, I will get back. Right. What I send out, I will get back. And I've tried different, uh, different things over, over the years to get me from where I was to where, to where I am right now. But I will say that three years ago, because I, we're both in E-Women and I'm a Platinum member, so I go to the Platinum um, uh, conference in the end of January, the 1st of February. There was a woman in there that I had met the one conference I went to. She was just amazing. I'm going to give her a, a prop, Sandy Brown out of Arizona. And I approached her a couple years ago and I said, Sandy, I need a spiritual coach and I would like you to be that person. And we talked and she became my coach. And she kept saying, there is something that's blocking you. She is more of a leadership, but she, but she does have spirit. And to make a long story short, 
we were able to figure out what was blocking me. Here I am, 69, 70, 71. I mean, and all these years, there was, there was a piece that was blocking me. I knew about it, but I didn't realize it was stopping me. And once we discovered it, then it was like, oh my God. And I can just tell you how much brighter the sky is and how much more yellow the yellow is because I don't have that barrier anymore. And so I have always said, my business is to show women how to remove the barriers, preventing them from creating the life they were born to live. But now that my barriers have been removed, I see the usefulness of that. So I talk to women when they ask me about coaching is, first of all, are you committed? Because it's going to cost you. Right. Are you. Are you committed? Are you ready to, you know, are you ready to be unstuck? Are you ready, you know, to um, not be sick and tired of being sick and tired anymore? <laughs> and, uh, and nine out of 10 times they are. Uh, if they they may be ready, but they are allowing um, finances or something to get in the way, and and they don't even want to talk about it. It's like, no, I can't do it now. I said, but there, I have other packages, you know. So right. I am looking for those that are committed. I am looking for those who say, I heard about you, and I really need some help. Nine out of ten times, they don't know what it is, but I'm pretty sure it's a barrier. A lot of times, it's a barrier that happened when they were younger. And so we want to know, we want to get to the bottom of it so that they can begin to look at themselves differently. It's, it's the same thing. It's, it's, it's shifting your thinking. When you change your perspective, you change your reality. Right. You really right. do. You really do. For those who are not familiar with um, the term of spirituality versus religion, would you care to like elaborate a little bit more about what the difference is? So I believe, I mean, I have a wonderful church and we have an agenda and there's certain things that we do, you know, uh, regularly uh, that are a part of the, I'm Baptist, you know, part of the religion. Spirituality is much more personal. It is my relationship with my father. And so he and I communicate daily because I can't get anything from the people around me. They stumbling too, <laughs> you know, human beings, right. you know, everybody's stumbling. So I don't right. need to get my answers from there. I need to go inside because I came here as spirit. I will leave as spirit. And so I have three things that I want to share with everybody that I tell all of my clients and then insist that they practice because Tanya, you were saying, so how do you get them to do that? There are certain, not a lot, but there's certain uh, routines that they must get into. So this one is three pronged. The first thing that they must do is wake up a half hour earlier than they ordinarily will because you have to commit to this. This mm -hmm. isn't just something you slide into. This has to be as intentional as you're going to work, as you're eating dinner, you know, as you get ready for bed. Um, so the first thing is you must journal. Mm. You must journal. And I call it my dear God letter in the morning, because I do it in the morning. And I, and I always start with, good morning, Father God, Holy Spirit, Lord Jesus. This is the day that you have made and I will rejoice in it. So I already am expecting it's gonna be the best day ever. And the reason it's gonna be the best day ever is because it's the only day I have. It's right. an unrepeatable day. I can't go back and I don't know what's forward. So right now, right now in this minute is my best time, spending it with you. This is my best time because I expect it to be good. And you get back what you expect. Right. So journal and you start to, and you write down whatever is concerning you, whatever you love, whatever is not working, whatever is working. It's your dear God letter. I like that. And when you finish writing for the day, you can have 50 pages or two pages, you know? Um, but when you finish writing for the day, it's like a relief because you've gotten stuff from yesterday out of your head. Why would you want to bring yesterday in and start today's day with it? Or worse yet, bring in yesterday into tomorrow and you still miss today. So after you journal, you close the journal and I just put my hand over it and I say, thank you God, because I know that he's got it. He's going to take care of it. So I put the journal over there. Right. I then read something motivational. I love Dr. Cindy Trim. Her book is, her daily devotional is amazing. Uh, there's a, a, another one, uh, Jesus Calling by Sarah Young. Mm -hmm. 
it took me three years to get through each of those books and I'm still reading them because you don't read them like, oh, I read this today and I'll read this tomorrow. If there is something that speaks to me, that speaks to my spirit, right. I'm going to hold on to it maybe a month and continue to speak it out loud because I want it to get in my whole body. What, what is being said to me? What is, what is, that's how you feed yourself. Right. You know, spiritually, by reading wonderful words and encouraging words and motivating words and words that can just make you stronger in spirit. Right. So that's the second thing. The third thing then is to literally get in a, re a position. I, I prefer sitting on the floor. Everybody doesn't have to, but you need to sit up straight, not crossing your legs and sit against the, a, a chair or the wall or whatever, and then close your eyes and start to think about what you just read. How, what was so important about it? What was so good about it? What resonated with you? Right? Right. And that's what you go in the silence with. I also suggest that you bring your journal in the silence because you may hear something that you want to write down. And this takes practice. I've been doing this now 11 years. It takes practice to still your mind. And my mind doesn't stay still for long because I can easily all of a sudden say, oh, I think I'm going to go and buy five pairs of shoes at DSW when, yeah, no, that wasn't God talking. It really <laughs> wasn't. So then I go, oh, let me come back. Let me come back. But when he wants to talk to you, he just pours into you. He just pours into you. And it is, it is amazing. It's exciting. It gives you, uh, it's like a GPS. So you have, you, you know, just enough steps to take you a little bit further, which is why I don't worry, right. you know, which is why there is no stress, which is why um, I enjoy, I, I, I feel joy inside every day because well. it is a blessing to be alive. You know, when you're connected to the spirit. And that's not a lot of babbling words. I mean, there are times when I've written, I'm saying, Lord, I am really pissed today. It's me talking to him. So, you know. So uh, here's another question I want to ask. I, I, how do you know is, if it's like a, a, the, the voice of God versus your own? I mean, you question. mentioned it about that. That's a good question. Again, I've been practicing this for a while. And the more you practice, the more you will be able to discern. Again, he's not going to tell me to go out and buy five pairs of shoes. <laughs> he's just not. But there are, there, are, there are thoughts that come in. They're like very loud to me. And if I don't write them down, I may forget them because, you know, they say this, the small whisper of God. It sounds loud, but then it's like, if I don't write it down, I cannot remember it. It's just amazing. But again, I've been doing this long enough now to be able to discern. And let me tell you, there are Saturday was um, a quiet time. I didn't hear anything. But when I'm coaching, I can, I can hear. I hear. And I, I say, and sometimes, I used to. I don't do it anymore. But I used to say, wow, that, that sounded good. Who said that? You know? <laughs> right, but right. now I know that I really am God's voice. You know? And he is speaking through me. So he is using me to work with his people. And I feel that it is an honor. And so it is, I guess, my energy attracts them and vice versa. So it is a practice that you can't do every five days or so. It is a practice that you must do every day. And here's the thing. He gives us 24 hours, seven days a week. We can't give him 30 minutes with an hour on Saturday, maybe, or Sunday. And when right. you look at other leaders, you know, I always talk about Richard Branson because Richard Branson was on Oprah years ago and she showed his island and he had this beautiful place that, at home that was like sitting at the top of the, of the island. And there was this one area that was wide open. It had, you know, a roof over it, but there was a hammock there. Mm -hmm. And he said, this is where I run my business from. Wow. All that he's doing and he's got the silence and he's got the view. It was a beautiful view because it's in here. Right. Otherwise you're reacting to what other people do and you're doing what other people do. And I want to do what I'm supposed to be doing. So that's why the quiet is so important for me. 
I love it. I love your message. So before we wrap up, my last question is, what would you really want to leave the audience with? I want them to begin to recognize that we should, in order to avoid reacting and, and tend to respond, you should be responding rather than reacting. And so when you are living from the inside out, you respond. When you are living out here, you are reacting. And I can see angry people and angry pe people are fearful right. because they're not connected. And so I want everybody who is listening to appreciate the gifts that you have inside and that you were put here for a reason and that each of us has this little piece of the puzzle that we have to put, we have to leave on the planet because we're creating a legacy, whether we like it or not, we are creating a legacy. So why not be intentional about it and focused right. on it and, and allow it to uh, bring more to the world than was here before you got here. Well, that was beautiful. I, like I said, I would love your message. It was, I, I'm, I know somebody's gonna definitely resonate with that. So Ms. Riggs, where can people find your information and, and connect with you? Okay, so I am, I do have a website, which is www.speaktoyourspirit.com. That's S-P-E-A-K, T-O, Y-O-U-R-S-P-I-R-I-T.com, speak to your spirit.com. And we are in the process of redoing it. You know, that's another thing, girl. I mean, a, a website is never done. It's just never done. As soon as you like, wow, I like this, you got to change something. So that's what we're doing right now. So by the time this airs, it will be done and I'll be excited about folks coming on. Uh, and then uh, I have speak to your spirit in a Facebook page, uh, Rita C. Ricks. I think for LinkedIn and uh, Instagram. Okay. Yeah. And I also want to know another reason why we connected. You're YouTube. You're a YouTube sister, right? I am. I <laughs> am on YouTube. I've been on YouTube even before I really knew what YouTube was all about. But you know, that's another thing. I'm always surrounded by really good people. You know, God just sends people my way like you, you and I met, you know, on a web, I mean, uh, on a Zoom call just like this. So he just sends people that help me to get further, you know, right. and that's, that's what we're supposed to be doing. So, yeah. Well, thank you. I had a pleasure talking to you and I, I love the wisdom that you shared. And I would love to have you come back another time. If you, anytime I would love to, thank you so much for asking me. Definitely. Definitely. And I want to remind the listeners who are checking in that your feedback is welcome. Always welcome. Yes. Emails. If you have any show or guest ideas that you'd like to see, like share and subscribe. And also mm -hmm. remind you that all of Rita's uh, comments or links will be posted in the comments. And remember, take things in stride, go with the flow, and create your own path. And again, thank you for tuning into this episode of Coffee with Tea. We'll see you back here next time. Thank you. Share with us. What was one of your takeaways from today's show? Post your answers in the comments. <laughs>